everyone, it's Ivan with kitpatch.com out here for another gun review. And today, talking about this little guy right here, which is the BRN 180 by Brownells. Let's go ahead and start with the what. If you are unfamiliar, Brownells has came out with some pretty cool kind of retro clones. And this being one of them. This being kind of a clone of the original AR-18 AR-180, which Eugene Stoner designed. And it was a piston-driven kind of AR platform. Granted, it was made out of stamped steel, things along those lines, and Brownells, true to kind of the rest of their retro line, updating materials and stuff where it makes sense, whether it's barrel steel, things like that, and to that end, yeah, better barrel steel than kind of the original, actual billet rather than stamped metal, M-lock section so you can actually attach things, things along those lines. And yeah, overall, Pretty sweet little gun. Through Brownells, you can obviously buy the BRN80 upper receiver, but they've also made their lower receiver, BRN180M, I believe it is. And dimensionally, basically an AR-15 lower receiver, and everything works the same as far as being able to populate it with a regular lower parts kit, things like that. But when we get back here to the end, there's actually a section of 1913 rail. Picatinny. So you can put on any type of folding brace or stock or fixed stock or fixed brace for that matter, depending on what you want. Right here, I believe this is the, I'm bad with nomenclature. It's like the TF 1913, I think, from SB Tactical, and it is a folding pistol brace. And so you can go ahead and attach that on. You can leave nothing on there if you want. But the BRN 180 upper receiver will go ahead and go on this, obviously, perfectly made for it. But if you so choose, you can actually throw this upper receiver on any mil spec AR-15 lower receiver. And because it's piston, it doesn't use the receiver extension, buffer tube, buffer, buffer spring, any of that stuff. So if you wanted to, to save weight, you could go ahead and take that buffer spring and buffer out since it doesn't require it. But this upper receiver will go on any mil spec lower receiver to include the Buren 180M. There are some things to be aware of when it comes to disassembly of the Buren 180. You can basically break it down like a shotgun, like your regular AR, but this piece is kind of captured in here. So you'll bring it kind of close to your chest, do that until this comes out. And now you have this back arm with both of these springs. And if you keep coming, you can remove your charging handle. Then you can pull this whole kind of bolt assembly out. And if you're one of those people that likes cleaning, you can clean it. Or if you're like me, you just add more lube. And to reassemble, you can slide that guy back in there. Drop this guy in so it's captured. Slide it forward. These go back in, kind of give that a good smack, and put it together. There is also a provision for removing the handguard, at which point you can get and access the piston. Honestly, I've shot this a lot. If it ever stops functioning, I will probably go about cleaning that, but I've shot it a lot to include suppressed and continues to shoot fine. So. Probably not gonna clean that anytime soon. Speaking of shooting suppressed, this thing is amazing to shoot suppressed. I, well, it initially comes with basically a little kind of like true to retro clone, kind of like three prong flash hider. Doesn't do an amazing job in my experience, but I mean, it's a really small three prong flash hider and you have a 10 and a half inch 5.56. There's a lot of, there's a lot of unburnt powder coming out the end. And so I promptly switched out to actually the Surefire three-prong flash hider. Actually does a pretty good job with that. And then started shooting it some with the Surefire SOCOM RC2. Right here I have the flash hider that comes on the BRN 180S. I have three rounds of Frontier 55 grain on top of two rounds of Norma 55 grain. So kind of flash we get. It's 
Got them a lot of flash. So we're gonna pull this thing off and throw on the Surefire three prong flash hider. Right here is the Surefire flash hider. Again, another three rounds of Frontier on top of two rounds of Norma 55 grain. Quite a bit of difference, but we'll throw a can on here. Surefire SOCOM 5.56 RC2. And another five rounds of 55 grain, three on top of Frontier and two of Norma. Definitely had some flash in that first round and pretty nice after that. Shot amazing. The recoil impulse of this suppressed is arguably probably the nicest suppressed 5.56 gun I've shot. And I don't know what to attribute it to, whether it's the actual piston system itself, like the way this thing's actually tuned, like the weight distribution, whatever it may be, but incredible to shoot suppressed and shot it for a bunch with the SOCOM 5.56 RC2 to include in a night vision course with Koi Valdar Incorporated. Did an amazing job. And then I was like, well, is this kind of an anomaly specifically with the suppressor? So since then I've shot it with this right here, which is the Jumbo Shrimp by Q. I've also shot it with their Trash Panda, more or less equal performance with anything suppressed. This 5.56 Buren 180, incredible gun to shoot suppressed. I also have the 10 and a half inch Buren 180 chambered and 300 blackout. I've shot that quite a bit, well, almost exclusively suppressed with either direct thread, full Nelson or half Nelson. And that also really nice gun to shoot suppressed. I will say for me personally, the imp or recoil impulse Definitely nicer with this 5.56. And I don't know if part of it is just the recoil impulse is gonna be more with a 30 caliber projectile, like 300 blackout. But for whatever reason, not that the 300 blackout one doesn't shoot nice, but a suppressor on the 5.56 is amazing. Like it shoots really, really nice. And so originally these actually came couple different variants as far as ones that actually had an adjustable gas block or piston system basically. And now they're on version 2.0 essentially. So like if you end up getting their 16 inch version, it also has an adjustable gas block piston. And I will show you right now, basically there's two settings, pretty easy to switch between them, get a piece of brass or something, essentially to press it down, rotate it more or less quarter turn and now you're at that next gas setting. And these do an incredible job running suppress. Like they, they nailed it as far as figuring out basically that piston system in there for these guns. Which brings me to how have I used this BRN 180 upper receiver as well as the 180M low receiver by Brownell. So I've actually shot it quite a bit. I actually use this gun in a two-day advanced night vision course with Koi Valdar Incorporated. During that, I actually ran the 5.56 upper receiver, which this is, with the Surefire SOCOM RC2 on there. And during day two, I ended up actually shooting the 300 blackout version. Day two, mainly kind of working through housework, things like that, with, I believe, the half Nelson silencer on it during that. And it did an amazing job. This, it's such a cool gun. Like on the one hand, there's kind of a nostalgia part as far as Eugene Stoner's piston AR that he designed. But then at the same time, you have enough of a modern take to where you have actual M-lock pick rails so you can mount things on it so that it's usable. And also the incorporation of this low receiver so you can have folding brace makes it really really compact especially if you want to do any kind of kind of deployment drills with this and no overall this thing's amazing and as i mentioned 
the 5.56 version, suppressed. Such a pleasure to shoot. Through all of it, I've been really, really pleased. Are there any downsides? Mm. On the one hand, I will say during that night vision course, actually, I think it was during the introduction night vision course with Koi Valdar. I actually let a buddy of mine borrow this. He was shooting it. And part of that course, we ended up working through malfunctions, one of which being bolt override. And this is a monster. Like, I don't know how it happens like naturally, but it got set up in here. Definitely a monster to clear. The other thing I will say is there's certain components of this gun, which I think are there largely for nostalgia. So if you were to look at a AR-180, look at the BRN-180, there's definite similarities, but there's also things that obviously change, like billet, imlock, all of those things. One of the things they decided to keep because it is really iconic is this charging handle. I hate this charging handle. I'll say it right now. It is true to the original, but this thing is murder on everything to include your body. This will, it's neuraled metal basically, and it'll grab pretty much anything, especially if you're trying to take this out of a pack that maybe has any type of mesh inside of it. It grabs all kinds of things. And it also will chew up your hands. Definitely had that happen. Basically it was doing something, manipulating it. Bolt was locked back, went forward. My hand was positioned where apparently it shouldn't have been. And I took a chunk of skin off. And yeah, not a huge fan of this charging handle. To be totally honest, even though it is true to like the retro clone, one, I would love to see an improvement on the charging handle, but two, it would actually be cool if it was a left-hand charger. But now we're straying even further from the actual AR-18, AR-180. So I get it, but hopefully there's gonna be some good aftermarket charging handles made for this gun. You know what some of you are asking yourselves, Ivan, is this a quarter MOA gun? because I need a laser beam for the 25 yard indoor range that I train at. Well, I ended up taking this thing out, went ahead and threw a SBR low receiver on it so I could actually have a nice stock, get a good cheek weld, and ended up shooting it, I believe, with the 5x25 Voodoo EOTech scope at 100 yards and using a number of different loads, both with 5.56 five, as well as 300 blackout. Here's the groups I got out there that day. Initially using some 147 grain full metal jacket from Gorilla Munitions, my first group came in at 2.69 MOA. My second group with a flyer coming in at 3.76 MOA. Switching over to some Sig Sauer 125 grain supersonics. First group came in at 1.94 MOA. And my second group opening up to 2.83 MOA. Next, switching to some Remington 120 grain OTFB. First group coming in at 1.67 MOA. And my second group at 1.9 MOA. Then dropping down to Subsonic using some Sig Sauer 220 grain. My first group came in at 1.14 MOA. My second group with that 220 grain from Sig coming in at 1.82 MOA. Then switching over to some Discrete Ballistics, Solid Copper, Expanding Subsonic Rounds. First group came in at 1.88 MOA. My second group coming in at 1.52 MOA. Switching over to 220 grain Minuteman Munitions Subsonic. First group coming in at 3.98 MOA. And my second group with Minuteman Munitions 220 grain again with that flyer coming in at 4.43 MOA. Without that flyer would have came in at 2.54 MOA. Back out on the range, this time shooting 5.56. First group, using some Tula 55 grain full metal jacket, came in at 3.9 MOA. My second group, using that same Tula ammunition, coming in at 2.9 MOA. 
Switching over to some American Eagle 556, 62 grain full metal jacket. First group coming in at 1.94 MOA. My second group with that American Eagle 62 grain coming in at 1.79 MOA. Then switching to some American Eagle 556, 55 grain full metal jacket. First group coming in at 1.11 MOA. And my second group with that same American Eagle 55 grain, for whatever reason, opening it up to 2.39 MOA. Next, shooting some Hornady 223, 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail. First group with flyer coming in at 1.87 MOA. Without that flyer, a solid 1.0 MOA. And my next group with that Hornady 55 grain, coming in at 1.19 MOA. Switching over to some Winchester M855. First group with a flyer came in at 3.26 MOA. Without that flyer, 1.36 MOA. And my second group with that Winchester M855 coming in at 1.82 MOA. What are my thoughts on those groups? Honestly, totally happy with those. 10 and a half inch 556 or 300 blackout. Actually pretty impressed with some of the subsonic out of that 10 and a half. And honestly, some of those 556 grouped really well too. I'm sure someone else behind this gun with that same ammo could do better, but that's what I got out there that day. What are my thoughts on the BRN 180? I think it's rad. It is a ton of fun to shoot, especially suppressed 556 probably one of the nicest guns I've shot, like short suppressed 5.56. And on top of that, a little piece of history, like basically this has its roots from Eugene Stoner. And the other cool thing is, which a lot of people I think have kind of wanted for a long time, is like a legitimate gas piston AR platform. So you can actually fold the brace or stock, depending on how you have it set up. It can fire from this position if that's important to you, but you end up with something really compact, especially with respect to deploying from a bag, something along those lines, or even just for transport. And it is designed around the AR platform. So rather than some other guns that kind of check a few of those boxes, whether they are actually a piston or maybe they do have a folding stock, like I think this kind of combines a lot of those really good elements except for this charging handle. I'm sure someone will make an aftermarket charging handle that's not super abrasive like that. But overall, been really pleased with this gun. It is a lot of fun. And as I mentioned, basically can pick it up respectively, whether the upper receiver or the lower receiver. And depending on where you are, maybe a freedom reduced state, they do make a 16 inch, which I haven't spent too much time with. Shot it a little bit and it's fun. I look forward to shooting that one some more as well. But this gun, this gun, part of this gun, basically there will be some BRN 180s coming cross country on the Coast to Coast 2021 tour. So if you come out to those range days, you will have an opportunity to shoot them. And two of them will end up getting auctioned at the end of it in support of Special Operations Care Fund, SOCF. Really amazing organization. So yeah, if you want one of these guns, that happens to make its way across the country. You can get that around July 15th, basically go bid on it, 2021. And if you're seeing this in like 2025, yeah, that party's gone. But if you appreciate my content and want to support it, I greatly appreciate it. One way is supporting me directly through Patreon. It helps me go out, create more content for you. And yeah, little as a dollar a month, like less than a cup of coffee. And if you have questions for me, happy to answer them over there where we have an active Discord. Probably not going to be down in the comments section, but happy to answer all your questions over there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Hey,